It's common barbecue knowledge that the best way to tell when a pork butt is done for pulled pork is to probe it for tenderness. You want to keep probing it until it is tender like room temperature butter. But what if there was a way to cook the perfect pulled pork, tender, juicy, delicious, without having to probe it at all, without having to use any judgment or get any experience with knowing exactly what the right probing consistency is before your pulled pork is done. That's what I wanted to find out in this video. So I'm testing two sides of the same pork butt. I'm cooking one all the way up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm probing it for tenderness like I do all of my pork butt and then we'll measure the weight loss and the moisture loss and we'll see how tender and juicy it is and we'll compare it to the second half of the same pork butt that I cooked up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. I wrapped and then I held in the oven at 165 degrees Fahrenheit overnight. And my theory is that the one that we hold overnight will be just as perfectly finished as the one that we took up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit and probed for tenderness. And we won't have to probe for tenderness at all. So let's get smoking. Thanks to Cometeer for sponsoring this video and sending me their amazing meltable and ready to serve coffee. Cometeer is a completely new way of making coffee. You just run the capsule under hot water, pop it in a cup and pour hot water over it. And that's it, you have delicious coffee that it's even better than drip coffee. Ooh, that's damn good coffee and hot. Yeah, honestly, this is really good coffee. I wasn't expecting a flash frozen coffee that's delivered to me in the mail to be this good. It only took me like five seconds to make. Cometeer is the only 100% brewed coffee that's flash frozen in recyclable aluminum containers to lock in the freshness. Basically how it works is a monthly shipment comes right to your door with your favorite flavors and you keep it in containers in your freezer until you're ready to use them. It's convenient. You can make any style of coffee you want, hot, iced, espresso. There's no mess, there's no stress. And as a bonus, you can give the capsules to your kids to play with because they play with everything except the toys. Why? Now, if you guys are interested, for a very limited time, you can get 40% off your first purchase plus free shipping when you use my code SMOKE40 at Cometeer.com. Cometeer never does this big of an offer, so make sure to order now before it's too late. Now, for this video, I'm starting out with a 10-pound pork butt, not to be confused with a pork shoulder, because there's a huge difference. Hey, no, get out of there. Jacob, are you being a menace? So I had to stop because my son just put his hand in the dog bowl. This is one of the things about trying to make YouTube videos while you're also taking care of a baby. I always feel a little bit guilty about um, not playing with him. So what I'm trying to do is play with him for like 30 minutes and then get 30 minutes of filming done and kind of balance it like that. Because otherwise I find I can just do filming all day and I'll completely... <laughs> neglect him which is not good so we're gonna go play buddy we're gonna go play for 30 minutes and then we'll get back to filming okay yeah yeah yes okay back to the pork butt it's different than a pork shoulder it comes from higher up on the shoulder of the pig and it's generally considered to be more tender and fatty than a pork shoulder or a picnic roast. It has a large bone in it, which I would usually leave in, but for this experiment, I need to cut the pork butt in half. So I'm removing the bone using my Dal Strong boning knife. This is a great knife to use for everything from deboning meat to trimming brisket to even butchering deer. And it makes me feel like a Viking. Smoke man, knife. Eat meat. Be a hard. Top yum. Chop one. Mega face. Barbar. Now strong. Very sure. Tante. Franking. Very cool. Viking. I'm a Viking man and I know I can With a knife in hand from a Dal Strong fam I'm a Viking man and I know I can Make the best smoked meat in the northern land I'm a Viking man and I know I am The manliest man in the Viking clan I'm a Viking man and I got a plan To pick up poop that I'll get a tan I'm a Viking man and then I'll call in And we'll gossip all day about her husband Dan I'm a Viking man and I'm a pen The spend expense that I got from Fran I'm the manliest man in the Viking clan And I paint my nails in deep cyan if you guys want to check out this knife, I will drop a link in the description section for you. Now, I'm applying mustard on each half of this pork butt as a binder, and then I'm going to apply some rub. I'm using Blue's Hog Sweet and Savory. I love this rub. It is so good on pork. And then after 30 minutes of letting that pork sweat out and absorb some of that salt in the rub, I'm placing it in my Traeger at 175 degrees Fahrenheit super low and slow so it can absorb a lot of smoke at the early part of the cook. And I'm doing that for four hours. 
periodically I'm coming back and I'm spritzing the pork butt with a solution of water and Worcestershire sauce just to add a little bit of color to the pork. And then after four hours, I'm cranking the heat up on my Traeger to 225 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm gonna continue to cook the pork until the bark is where I want it, and it's set, and it's nice and dark, or as dark as it's going to get. And in this case, it turned out that it was around 160 degrees Fahrenheit when I wanted to wrap it. And I'm monitoring the internal temperature, by the way, with my meter block. Thank you, meter, for giving me this block and letting me test it out because I really uh, am enjoying using it so far. It's got four remote probes, which is a big upgrade from my meter plus, which if you guys have watched my previous videos, you'll know that I love and I use all the time. And I've been using it for years to manage fires on my offset smoker and cook perfect brisket. So this four probe meter block is really awesome. It's got extended range, so it seems to disconnect less often, uh, connects to my Wi-Fi and it just makes it really easy to monitor uh, multiple pieces of meat on the grill at the same time without having to mess with any wires or probes or anything like that. So highly recommended. If you guys wanna check out the Meter Block or the Meter Plus, I'm going to leave a link in the description section below this video. Now, when the pork is ready to wrap, I put it in some aluminum pans and I put in a couple spoonfuls of a sugar water solution. For the purposes of this video, it's not a recipe video, so it doesn't matter what's in it, but uh, just for your guys' information, there's some sherry in it, there's uh, some uh, raw sugar that's dissolved in water, uh, there's a little bit of apple juice. It's just to add a little bit of moisture to the pork so it can absorb some moisture when it starts resting and cook faster throughout the wrap phase. After covering both pans with foil, one part of the pork butt goes into the oven. That is the pork butt that I'm going to hold overnight at 175 degrees Fahrenheit in the oven. The other half of the pork butt goes into my master belt electric smoker and I'm setting it to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the half of the pork butt that I'm taking all the way up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm going to probe for tenderness. When that pork butt was done in the master belt electric smoker, I probed for tenderness and it felt like butter and I knew it was done. So I took it out and I rested it on the counter for two hours. All right, guys, we've got the pork butt that was finished normally. It's the one with the toothpick in it. We're going to take it out. We're gonna weigh it first to see how much moisture it lost. And then we're gonna pull it apart and, and see how it tastes so we can compare it to the long rested pork butt. So let's open this guy up. It smells real good. Carefully take it out here. All right, this is two pounds and 5.5 ounces. Okay, I just did some calculations and it works out to about a 41% loss of moisture throughout the cooking process uh, for this uh, pork butt that I finish normally. So let's, uh, let's pull it apart and see how tender it is and see what it tastes like, most importantly. All right, let's start with the money muscle here and we'll just start pulling it apart by hand. Oh man, it's, it's really tender. It's just coming apart like nothing. It looks really juicy too. All right, now let's take a taste of this. Mm. Oh, it's a little bit dry. It took me a long time to chew that piece. It would be a lot better with barbecue sauce um, mixed in with it, and especially with all the sauce that I'm gonna put on it with the pulled pork sandwiches. It would be pretty pretty typical, but I would say this is a little bit dry for my taste. So I'll take another piece of the money muscle here. This is supposed to be the best part. A little bit better, but it is a bit dry. If you look at this piece in particular, you can see that as I pull apart the strands, there is moisture, but uh, there's not a ton. And I think most of that moisture is just um, being made up of all the fat inside of this, uh, this butt. It does pull apart very easily though, which is good. And if I toss this in barbecue sauce, a little bit of vinegar, I think it would be really good. But yeah, it just pulls apart like nothing. The bark is pretty good. So what, it's about what I would expect for a pellet smoker. It would have been better on my offset smoker, but convenience is important as well. And there we have it. So this is the pulled pork that was finished normally up to around 203 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're going to test the pulled pork that we finished overnight. Okay, taste test time for the long rested or the long held overnight pork butt. Let's see, is it gonna be juicier? Is it going to be more tender? Is it gonna be drier? Ooh. 
Looks pretty much the same as the previous brisket I just tested at first glance, but we'll, we'll take it out and we will measure the weight and see how much moisture we lost. Take this guy out. Whew. It does feel a little bit more tender just taking it out than the past one, the last one that we did. So that is two pounds and 7.3 ounces. 7.3 divided by 16 uh, plus two, so 2.456 pounds. 2.4. One hundred minus fifty-seven is forty-three. So forty-three percent moisture loss, as compared to the previous brisket, which was a forty-one percent loss. So the numbers don't lie. It looks like we've lost even more moisture in this long-rested pork butt than the one that we finish normally up to two hundred three. But let's open it up and and pull it apart and uh, see if it's more tender, if it's actually more juicy. Uh, we're gonna find out really quickly. All right, again, I'm gonna start with the money muscle here. It is pulling apart very easily, similar to the last one that I did. It does look very juicy. It actually looks juicier than the last one I did, actually by a lot. If you look at that muscle, which is similar to the muscle that we pulled out on the last one, it's, it's shinier, it looks like it has more moisture. I'm not really getting any tough spots at all. Sometimes there's holdout zones in these pork butts, but it's pulling apart pretty easily. This muscle usually gets really dry, but it looks actually pretty good. So let's take a taste of, I think this is the money muscle. Mm. So you can see I, I was able to eat that and swallow it in like one second as opposed to the last one that took me like 30 seconds. It feels a lot more moist. You can tell I'm eating more of this one because it actually tastes better because it's just, it's just more moist. It has more of a fatty taste to it. Mm. The mouth feel is more, it's more porky. It's less dry. Like when I eat a overcooked pork chop, it's really dry. But if I eat like a medium rare pork chop, it's really tender and juicy. That's kind of the same comparison, roughly, here. It's definitely more porky, it's less dry. I mean, it's pretty definitive to me. So the big question, does stopping at 190 degrees internal and holding the pork butt overnight at 165 in the oven for 14 hours result in a more tender, juicy pork butt than a pork butt that you finish at around 203 to 205 degrees after you probe it a whole bunch to figure out when it's done. The answer based on this experiment, specifically for this pork butt that I cooked, the results of the long rested overnight pork butt are superior to the one that I finished at 203 normally. There's more juice in it, uh, it's more tender, it's got a better mouth feel, it's more porky, it tastes better, it's just in all departments better than the one that I finished up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit which was a little bit drier. So your experience might differ when you cook a pork butt. I always, always say you should always finish brisket, pork butt, large cuts of meat until they are probe tender and they probe like butter. But in this case, this is actually a method for not having to probe at all. As long as you're stopping at 190 and you're resting it in the oven overnight at 165 degrees Fahrenheit and you're careful with your temperatures and your oven's not way off and it's actually holding 165, this is a great way to cook a pork butt perfectly and you don't have to probe it at all. There's no judgment involved. All you have to do is wake up in the morning, open it up when it's done and it'll be ready for lunch. If you guys wanna chat with me more about my pork butt or my brisket experiments, then consider joining my Patreon. I'll link it in the description section below. We've got a private Discord chat channel where you can get direct access to me and we can hang out and we can chat. And uh, I would love to see what you're smoking on and see pictures of your food. It's a really cool community. I really appreciate the opportunity to get to know some of my hardcore viewers and supporters a little bit better. Uh, and I've, I've formed some really good relationships with people. It's probably one of the most meaningful things I've done in this whole YouTube journey. So consider checking that out below in my uh, uh, description section. And I hope to see you there, but I will definitely see you in the next video where 
Hopefully I'm back to smoking brisket again because that's my favorite thing to do.